Hello, Relativity friends. Here's something fun but painful. I said, uh, what would it look like if I just wrote out the uh, field equations for general relativity and looked at them all at once? <laughs> it's really unbelievable. So here is the generalized form of uh, the field equations for general relativity. Now, you notice I said equations. This is plural because these are these are tensors. This is a four by four, the matrix. This one is, this one is, and these are, right? Then that's because that space time has four dimensions. You have one dimension for time and three dimensions for space. Now, for whatever reason, when uh, Einstein, he started this, uh, he wrote down these journalized units as zero, one, two, three. I don't know why, but everyone does that. And it actually means it's, the zero is the time, the coordinate, and then X, Y, Z are the spatial the, the coordinates. So there are 16 separate equations here. And we're going to look at just one piece of one of them. And it's really unbelievable. So I just picked this one. So this is, uh, this is the Ricci, the, the, the tensor here. So I just picked the O1, the coordinate, uh, the element of the matrix which is the time and X, the component. So let's just look at this one piece of this equation, right? Here is the way it looks in the generalized, the coordinates. So the R sub I J, this is the, the coordinate, the zero one. And then we have to sum these partial derivatives of these things called the Christoffel, the symbols with respect to different, the coordinates. And then we have to sum the products of the Christoffel the symbols, and we'll get to what these are at the end. But, but let's just start and run this backwards, all right? So here's the first one. So I go through, and I, the only thing I know so far is I and J, because I picked it. It's the O1 element of that matrix. So I, so I put in my O1s everywhere I see an I and a J in this mess, I put in an O and a 1. So now I have to start summing these over these. And, and as an example, this says A goes from 0 to 3. So that's four sums of this uh, Christoffel, the symbol, with respect to this, the coordinate. All right? So let's do that. So it looks like this. So when A is equal to 0, the Christoffel, the symbol, gamma, 0, 0, 1, would be partially differentiated with respect to the x0 component, which is time. So I'm partially differentiating this with respect to time. So then you do it with time, x, y, z. You get to the next one, it's the same thing, subtracted. And you fill those in, and you get, and this time it's only differentiated with respect to 1, uh, to uh the x1 component, which is x, all right? So we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of these guys. All right, that was the easy part. Now we have to deal with these sums. Now, a double sum of something is equal to the sum of something summed again. <laughs> and you can prove that to yourself by just like doing ones and twos, and it works right, 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 right out. So I can rewrite this by putting a parenthesis here and summing this first and then summing it again. All right, so I did that. So we'll start with just this piece here, right? So this index B runs from zero to three of this generalized equation. So we have to go through this and put all the Bs in where they belong. So the first thing is B equals zero, then B equals one, two, and three, and we do all that. And now we can go back and plug this in to here in this bracket and sum the A's from zero to three. All right, so that's why, why, that's what I did. There's probably tons of mistakes in here, and that's not relevant. The, the, the whole point I'm trying to make is to show you how many terms and how complicated these equations are. So I did all this. Bada bing, bada bong, bada bong. Now I just took everything and put it right back into that, that first equation, which is here. And here's the whole thing.
Look at this mess. And you know what? You're not even done. The reason is now you have to go find all of these things called Christoffel the symbols. You have to go find 64 of these things to put in this equation to find that one element of one equation of Einstein's field equations. Now, what are Christoffel the symbols? They're defined like this. So we have our coordinate, ij. We have a something, the k. And we're going to sum this from 0 to 3. Now, this is called the, the metric, the tensor. So this is one element of the metric, the tensor. And this is one element of the inverse of the metric, the tensor, with respect to these coordinates, all right? So as an example, just, let's just let's look at one set for k equals 0. So this will be the time. So you need to find all of these 16 Christoffel the symbols for just one thing, the k equals to 0. Then you have to do k equal 1, k equal 2, and k equal 3. So there's 64 of these. <clears throat> now let's look at one specific example. And I'll just do the same one I was doing, which is 01. So we're going to pick the k equal to 0. So you go through and you put all of your k's in and your i's and j's that you know. And then you start doing your, your the summing. So you have all of these elements here of the tensor being differentiated with respect to these the coordinates, right? So you get four terms for each one of these. So you're going to have 64 times four terms to find your Christoffel the symbols. And you're not done yet, because in order to do this, you have to find the metric tensor. And the metric tensor is defined as this. Oop, I got off the page there. I don't know how. Uh, where these individual elements, G01, as example, is defined as the dot, the product of the E sub O dotted with E sub 1, the basis of vectors. These are basis of vectors. Each one of these are. And this is where you start in trying to solve these equations. You have to find the metric, the tensor. In order to proceed, go to the next step, find a Christoffel the symbols, go to the next step, find the Ricci tensor, and you keep going in that manner. And hopefully you're going to get something out of it. Anyway, I just thought it was fun to sit down and write these things out and see just how formidable these equations are. Unbelievably complicated. Anyway, I hope that's fun. I'll see you later.